I'm a medical doctor. And a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is not going to sound very doctor like, but I think it's absolutely fundamental for understanding what brought us here. And there's no doubt that this is a historic moment. In the midst of fear and hardship, many of us have the sense that we're at a crossroads. You know, many of us have the sense that we have an opportunity here and now to shift ourselves in the direction we're headed collectively. We must never underestimate the power of a pattern interrupt. It's a profound moment when we get a chance to look at our lives from a different vantage point and uh, get to examine our personal and societal programming that seemed so normal before when we were too busy to pause. There's incredible, incredible power in slowing down and taking the opportunity to tune in, tune into the truth of inside of ourselves and the truth of who we really are and the truth about the nature of our reality. Author James Allen has noted that the more tranquil a man becomes, the greater is his success, his influence, his power for good. Calmness of the mind is one of the most beautiful jewels of wisdom. Could it be that COVID-19 is emerging as a unique expression of the unified field in response to the dissonant waves we've been approaching all aspects of our lives and our short-sighted thinking? A symptom of a much deeper disregard for the beauty and balance of nature and for a, a disrespect for the magnificence of the unified field from which we stem. We and the rest of our material reality exist in a sea of unlimited energy and information. Not only do we exist within it, but it exists within us. And each of us is a unique manifestation of that limitless sea. Modern scientists now call it the unified field. And although the name is new, the concept is ancient. Mystics, Theologians, philosophers have contemplated the existence of such a field for forever and continue to do so today. It's been called many things, chi by the traditional Chinese, akasha in the yoga and Buddhist tradition, Brahman, even Om in the Hindu tr tradition, and great spirit with the Native American peoples, and ether for the ancient Greek philosophers and scientists. And all of this is translated as the life force of all that is the eternal essence of the universe, power without end and from which all power stems and from which all life springs. And many great minds have contemplated what the unified field is. Nikola Tesla called the field the ether and described it like an incredibly rarefied gas vibrating at almost infinite velocity. And I'll quickly walk you through my understanding of how matter and all of life emerges from the field as I think it's fundamental to, to really understanding what's gone wrong. So if the field is like a rarefied gas vibrating at infinite velocity, of, as aspects of the field slow down in gradation, we can begin to see their manifestation. So waves arise within the field and distinguish themselves against the backdrop rarefied vibration. The energy is the force that's moving the wave and the wave with its particular frequency and wavelength is the information. As one information wave intersects or interacts with another information wave, eddies form in this etheric sea and the information of a particle is formed and it allows for a particle to precipitate into existence. These particles can coalesce into larger particles and begin to interact with others to form hydrogen, the simplest of atoms, and then from there, all the other elements of the periodic table. And each aspect of matter that's precipitating into existence does so according to an information set. Remember the information waves interacting, superimposing, combining, and creating a series of vortices to form new, more complex information. You can consider this information set as a three-dimensional 
blueprint in the field. Everything has a blueprint from a subatomic particle to an atom, to a molecule, and then even a microorganism, rocks, plants, animals, even you. So how do we emerge as a unique manifestation of the unified field? When the sperm of your father penetrates the egg of your mother, even current science has documented there's a flash of light, and most likely a sound. In fact, those that flash brighter develop into healthier embryos. And so with that display of light and sound, that photoacoustic boom, it informs the unified field that your life was created. And this imprints what I like to call your three-dimensional pristine blueprint into the field that begins to guide your growth and development as an embryo and contains the information set to orchestrate the cellular layout and your complex physiology. Your pristine blueprint shares similarities with other human beings and more with members of your own family, but there are aspects of your blueprint that make you a unique manifestation of the field. Your pristine blueprint is influenced by your unique genetics, the astrological influences at the time of your conception, and most of all by your soul. Your soul can almost be likened to a memory chip storing information about every one of your past lives, every cultural context you've ever lived in, your previous choices and experiences that have influenced your character. The imprint of the soul leads to the development of certain unique attributes that allow your soul to carry on its path of learning and kind of the best set of circumstances needed for its growth and evolution. So my evolving sense about the blueprint is that this provides the information set to channel the life force inherent in the unified field into your physical form and the information set to orchestrate your exquisitely complex physiology. Did you know that we have 37 trillion cells, all, each with millions of chemical reactions happening every second in a coordinated manner? Did you know that current science has no way of explaining where this orchestration for this complexity is coming from? You know, even the most sophisticated of our quantum computers couldn't even close, come close to approximating this precise orchestration. As a medical doctor working with patients for over 20 years, another interesting idea that's really informed my thinking about health, disease, and aging also comes out of contemporary physics. And it's the idea that no physical form is static. Actually, all matter in the known universe is forming and annihilating, forming and annihilating trillions of times per second. And so are we. We are literally flickering in and out of existence. It's like the old celluloid film with individual film frames running by so quickly, it looks like one continuous unbroken story instead of a series of separate frames. You know, and so why, why does this matter? Because each trillionth of a second, when our physical body reforms, it's forming according to our three-dimensional blueprint. And a great example of this working smoothly is in the energetic beaming brightness of a child. And once in a while in a healthy adult that seems to defy aging. You know, in this case, these cases, there's high fidelity recording, you know, or it's like a 3D printed object that has perfect instructions. So usually though, as we go through life, things happen to us. We get exposed to toxins, we develop infections, we have traumatic experiences and each of these things has their own dissonant energetic signatures associated with them. Some things like the resonant energetic signature of magnesium or tryptophan, for example, are, they're in harmony with our bodies and other things like the herbicide glyphosate or mercury or the biochemical cocktail of intense stress are not and begin to create dissonance that accumulates in our system. And these dissonant signatures begin to disrupt the resonance with our blueprint as they create what's like static on the radio. You can still hear the music, but it's just less clear. 
you know, there's lower fidelity in the recording or the 3D printed object is less perfect. You know, back to the celluloid film analogy, if, if where light is passing through film and producing an image, imagine the light source is like the life force energy in the unified film field. And the film is like your pristine blueprint and the projected image is like your body. Now imagine that people handle the film day in and day out and fingerprints begin to accumulate on the film. Then each day as light is projecting through the film, the image becomes less and less clear. And that's literally like what happens in your body, which contributes to aging, breakdown and disease. So our degree of health directly correlates with how well the life force of the unified field flows through the correct information into our physical form. And when we're looking at this global pandemic, we need to understand what went wrong. And if we examine every aspect of our lives, we can see that many people have been living lifestyles that promote the accumulation of dissonance. You know, every single choice we make will either enhance or detract from resonance with our blueprint. I've been talking about static, but you know, here's a bunch of things that cause static. Eating low life force foods that contain the dissonant signatures of pesticides or chemical additives or GMOs. Drinking fluoridated, chlorinated water with pharmaceutical and chemical residues in there. Allowing things like dirty EMFs, Wi-Fi, 5G, toxic cleaning products fabric softeners, scented laundry detergents, chemical laden personal care products, you know, into our bodies and into our home environments. These things create static and they begin to disrupt resonance with our blueprint. Even immersing ourselves in fear generating news, watching porn, violent movies, creates static. With the way we've been living, the static is becoming stronger and stronger. The greater the static, the greater the misinformation, the less likely our immune system can handle this virus. And this is the setting for the coronavirus to emerge and take hold globally. In addition to looking at how our personal choices affect our health, when we come from the worldview of interconnectedness stemming from the new paradigm of the unified field, it's, it's really impossible to talk about individual human health without discussing the health of the collective or addressing the health of the environment. If we're all connected and emerge as unique expressions of this one grand thing, then harming any part is harming the whole and harming ourselves. We've been approaching almost everything we do from a reductionist disconnected worldview. We've been largely operating with dissonant systems, you know, strip mining for minerals, drilling for oil, blowing up hydrocarbons, industrial monocrop pesticide laden farming, allowing nitrogenous runoff into our waterways, choking out our coastal ecosystems and factory farming animals, nuclear weapons, chemtrailing, and now 5G. And the idea that these practices for resource management, energy production, agriculture, food production, conflict management, communication are not gonna affect our global environment and human health is a direct consequence of our worldview. You know, it's time for a change. There are new ways of approaching every aspect of our lives when we shift to the paradigm of the interconnected, abundant, unified field. And all of these things that are going on in our global culture may not be our personal choices, yet they affect us. It's important that we truly understand this so that collectively we can make a shift on how we approach every aspect of our world. With how we've been living and the stresses in our environment, there's just so much dissonance and misinformation. It makes sense that we're more vulnerable to infection. So I'm gonna ask again, could it be that COVID-19 is emerging as a unique expression of the unified field in response to all of the dissonant systems and short-sighted thinking. Yes, our global pandemic is a symptom of a much deeper disregard for the beauty and balance of nature. 
but disrespect the magnificence of the unified field from which we stem. And right now, with our global pandemic, it's of vital importance to enhance optimal resonance so that our immune system, an incredibly intricate coordinated system is receiving the appropriate orchestration. So is there anything that we can do? Absolutely. You know, let's first, let's look at a population of people that seem to be doing very well. I'm happy to report that none of the thousands of patients we care for at my clinic have reported a serious version of either known or presumed COVID-19 infection. You know, many of our patients and friends have had what looks like a milder version, but with healthy lifestyle, supplements, good care, and rest, they've been able to move through it. And I feel like it's important to mention this because when I was having appointments these last few weeks and fielding answering service calls and emails and portal messages and then tuning into the news and social media, it was just so clear that fear is the dominating emotional state at this time. Mm -hmm. One of the most powerful things we can do to keep ourselves healthy or to have only a mild cold-like reaction to this virus is be mindful of our thoughts and the emotional response those thoughts generate in us. And you have to remember that thoughts engender an emotional response that's associated with the release of a particular cocktail of neurotransmitters and hormones. And these all have vibratory signatures associated with them that collectively can either benefit or suppress your immune response. David Hawkins, one of my favorites, MD, PhD, calibrated the vibratory level of emotional states on a, on a logarithmic scale from one to a thousand. And he found that emotional states of joy calibrated at 540, love calibrated at 500, whereas fear at only a hundred. And he documented that emotional states calibrating over 200 were strengthening to the body and those under were weakening. So even though many people don't feel kinesiology testing is a legitimate scientific tool, Dr. Hawkins did rigorous testing on numerous subjects using multiple examiners and the results were consistent and reproducible over years. I found this out firsthand back in 2004 when I had Lyme disease, which is caused by a bacteria, not a virus, but the same principles apply. I could literally turn my, my symptoms around on a dime if I shifted from a state of fear and worry about the future. Like, how am I going to be able to care for my daughter? How am I going to be able to keep my clinic open and keep seeing patients? You know, maybe I really have ALS and not Lyme disease. And, you know, instead to a, a higher vibrational emotional state of serenity and positivity and a sense of connection with the unified field at large. And during that time, one of the most powerful things I did was a daily meditation practice where in meditation, I learned, you know, I just explored my energetic anatomy and learned how to ground off and clear the coarse emotional vibrations of fear and anger and things like that and bring life force to the stagnant areas of my body, like my neck and shoulders, where all the bacteria seem to collect and, and strengthen my immune system. And I think it's important for all of us to just really remember joy calibrates at 540, you know, and this is on a logarithmic scale. So it's a huge difference from fear. So whatever you can do to remain positive by focusing on what brings you joy, such as being able to be with people you love or sit outside and feel the sun on your body or you know, listen to birds, go on a hike to a live stream yoga class or a workout on YouTube. I mean, that's going to be extremely beneficial. If you've got to limit your exposure to social media or the news, please do that. You know, read a really good book, The Power of Now. That would just be so helpful right now. I think it's really interesting for us to contemplate that viruses are not actually alive. They're basically inert chemical structures that can't live on their own. And as most of you know, they have to enter into your cells and hijack your cellular machinery to replicate. And then this process and your immune reaction to them, unfortunately, is what damages your own cells. 
And there are many things that are going to influence how readily the viruses replicate once they enter your body. And your emotional state is probably one of the most powerful things. But in addition to that, you know, what else can we do to strengthen our immune system and enhance resonance with our blueprint? You know, the basic things, of course, like get enough sleep, keep yourself well hydrated, eat vital, whole alkalinizing foods that, you know, avoid sugar and foods that, that create dissonance, oxygenate your body, deep breathing and exercise and spend time in nature, place your feet on the ground, hug a tree, literally, you pull electrons into your body is that way. And then consider some supportive supplements. My absolute favorite is beta-glucan. When it's cleaved to the appropriate size to be taken up by the macrophage, which is one of your immune surveillance cells. Once that's taken up by the macrophage, it literally triggers the expression of about 300 genes and the production of all of these information molecules and intermediates that coordinate your immune response and enhance your antiviral immunity. And of course, vitamin C has been shown to enhance the immune system. We now know zinc can actually hamper the replication of the virus. Vitamin D enhances your immune re resilience. And you know, consider herbs that have a long history of use for immunity, such as astragalus and andrographis. And I'm a huge fan of energetic technologies. That's kind of my niche. And uh, in my clinic, and the, you know, these are available at other places around the country at least, uh, we have a Novathor device that it looks like a tanning bed, but it contains 3,600 LED lights in the red and near infrared spectrum. And these enhance the activity of the main players of your immune system and increase circulation of blood and lymphatics. We also have another device called a Hocket with multiple layers of technology, including infrared ozone sauna, pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, immune enhancing frequency therapy, and these enhances your immune system and strengthens the vitality of your cells, literally making them almost like shielding them with an electric charge that makes them more resilient to invasion by viruses. And there's definitely more help on the way. I'm the chief medical officer of Resonant Technologies Group, which develops technologies and products based in resonance physics. And we've begun clinical trials in India and Australia on a powerful immune modulatory agent that is used as an intramuscular injection, and it will assist in the recovery of COVID-19 as it's been shown to upregulate antiviral immunity while balancing and kind of toning down the production of the pro-inflammatory cytokines that can produce the profound damage in the lungs of people with the severe forms of COVID-19. And this product, which had previously been shown to be safe in Germany in, in clinical trials, uh, may ultimately be used as probably one of the most powerful prophylactic agents to upregulate antiviral immunity and enhance immune surveillance. You know, so it's, it's, it's our hope in light of this global pandemic that after our clinical trials are completed, there may be a fast track approval process so that we can make this available to everybody. So of knowing that there are things we can do to stay healthy is empowering. The other important thing we now need is hope. As we look around at our economic system, at, you know, it's facing many challenges and many are faced with economic uncertainty. Fear and anxiety are natural responses. But what I've learned in the past many years of traveling around the planet, meeting with cutting edge scientists, inventors, medical doctors, and advanced healers is that there's new ways of approaching healing, farming, energy production, resource management, and communication that do not create negative ramifications for our health and our environment, and that are more resonant with how nature functions. So in the aftermath of our system challenges, there may be an opportunity like we have never seen before for us to prosper in a different way.